Hi there, welcome back to the VMO YouTube channel. This is Jansen and today I'm going to be taking a look at rigging up a float. Float fishing is a great way to fish. It's really fun. You can have a lot of enjoyment. If you haven't fished before, it's a great way to get into sea fishing. You can catch species of fish such as mackerel, garfish, bass, pollock, wrasse and more. Without further ado, let's get into setting up this float rig. So here we have our float rig. We've got everything in there that we need. We've obviously got the float itself. We've got a lead weight. We've got a small swivel. We've got a hook. And we've also got a couple of night lights because this float, you've got a couple of slots either side at the top that you can stick a night light in. So you can obviously fish into the dark and you'll be able to keep an eye on your float. Right, let's get this one open and see what we've got in the pack. It says it comes with instructions, but I'm going to show you how to rig this up anyway. So there's the float itself. As I say, you've got these two slots, just the right size to pop a night light into. Perfect. So there's our float. And if I empty out the contents of the bag, and it all runs away. And here we've got the other components supplied with the float that we're going to be using to make up our float rig. So all we need now is some line. So before I do anything else, I'm going to tie the hook onto a short length of 15 pound mono. And just a simple grin or not. Like that. The old faithful hook puller. Lovely. So this is going to form our trace line. Snip that off. And the hook that's supplied with this setup is actually pretty decent. You know, some of these float packs, the components are a little bit ropey maybe, but that's quite a nice quality hook there, gotta say. So we've tied that onto, as I say, a short length of 15 pound line. And I would say around 12 to 15 inches is about right. So I'm just gonna snip that off there. And then to the other end, we're going to tie our swivel. Now this is an old fashioned barrel swivel, but for float fishing, no problem at all. You're not gonna put in any excessive strain on it. So it will do the job absolutely fine. So same thing again, grin or not. Knot puller. Snug that one down, and there we go. So now we've got our basic trace line for our float set up. Swivel at one end, hook at the other. Really simple. So the next thing we need is the line coming off of our rod tip. So there's the end of the line. I'm just going to take one of the beads supplied in the pack and slide it on. Next, I'm going to take the float itself, go through the top and out the other end. Then I'm going to take the lead weight supplied with the pack, pass the line through the lead weight. Next, I'm going to take the second bead, slide that on too, and I'm going to tie the end of the line to the swivel of the hook length, again with a grinner knot. It's a nice, easy, quick setup, this. 
It's one that you don't have to do at home before you go. You can literally do it on the beach. It takes all of five minutes with a bit of practice, even less time than that. And so there is our basic float setup from the hook all the way down to the swivel, the bead, the lead weight, the float and another bead. So the idea of this setup is that once you've cast out, the lead weight sinks down to the bottom and then the float rises up in the water to the depth that you set it at. So in order for us to set a depth for the float, we need to put a stop above the bead that sits just above the float there. So what I'm gonna use for that is a bit of power gum. Now I don't use power gum very often, but for this kind of job, it's absolutely perfect. So there we go, that's our power gum, 10 pound breaking strain. And power gum, if you haven't used it before, it's kind of like monofilament, but it's got a degree of stretch to it makes a really nice stop knot. So I'm just going to trim off a little bit of that, a few inches. Like that. And then on the line above the bead, above the float, I'm going to tie a simple stop knot. So I'm going to wrap the power gum around the line. I'm then going to come back and form a loop like that and then I'm going to go back through that loop one two three times and I'm going to pull both ends of the power gum to snug down the knot like that. So there is our stop knot tied. And I'm going to trim that off and just leave a few millimetres either side. Like that. And there is our power gum stop knot. And you can see that that's actually movable so we can adjust the depth at which we're fishing at so if i slide that down now and place it directly above the float there's our stop knot the float's going to rise up in the water and hit the knot there's our lead weight onto our trace line so we know that if the trace line is 12 inches and we've probably got another 8 inches or so above the swivel, we know that we're currently fishing at around 20 inches deep. So if we were fishing that kind of depth, we'd be up near the surface of the water, probably the best area to try for garfish, bass, pollock also feed up near the surface at times. But if we wanted to fish deeper still, we could literally slide that stop knot as far up the line as we like. So then the float rises up even further in the water and presents our bait a lot deeper down. But as a starting point, I'd suggest setting your float at around three to four foot. Remember, this is a method predominantly for summer feeding species. So species such as mackerel, garfish, pollock, bass, wrasse. You can have a lot of fun fishing for wrasse. If there's nothing else around, there's generally always some wrasse underneath your feet. If you're fishing off rocks into deep water directly below you, lots of kelp, that kind of thing. You want to fish your float set up quite deep, perhaps six to eight foot, but it really does depend on the depth of water that you're actually fishing in as well. If you've got a good depth of water in front of you, say 12 to 15 feet, you want to try to be fishing down near the bottom as best you can. And using baits such as ragworm, crab, you're going to pick up the wrasse which are lurking around the kelp beds. It's a really effective method for wrasse fishing, but as I say, also for mackerel, if you're fishing on a harbour wall, a jetty, a breakwater, that kind of thing, if you get shoals of mackerel come through, 
the float fishing method can be really devastating, really effective, fun way to fish, and far better than dragging out six fish at a time on feathers. So that was a tackle talk on how I like to set up a float fishing rig. It's a really fun, easy way to fish. Anyone can do it. Get the kids into fishing. If you've never fished yourself before, it's a great way to get into the sport. Give it a try. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please leave some feedback in the comments. We always do love to read your comments, by the way, so please do keep them coming. I'll catch you again.